Hi, everyone. My name is Girgana, but I usually go by Jerry. And when I started writing this talk, I realized I say that at the start of every single one of my talks. So I thought I should explain. It's not that I don't like my name. It's just that it gets pronounced, mispronounced quite often. So please just stick to Jerry if you can't pronounce Girgana. Anyway, what are we here to talk about today? Well, I'm going to tell you what the fudge AOT is. And to those of you who saw my talk last year, I'm really sorry to say, but the T in AOT does not stand for things. So there won't be any cute robots this year, but that's why I put this guy on the screen so he can hopefully hypnotize you into forgetting about the potential mistakes I'm going to make. I also thought I should tell you a little bit more about all the other things I love besides Star Wars. I love my husband. Uh, the Angular developer he was talking about with the two promise thing. I love my dogs. Their names are Pixel and Scuzzy. I love doing crazy things. And like any reliable server's uptime, 99.99999% of the time, I love my job. I work for BBD. We're a software development company. And I'm a web developer, and this is mainly where this talk came from. So, BTW, WTF, OMG, FML, LOL, IMO is AOT. Well, it stands for ahead of time, and it's usually followed by the word compilation. And ahead of time compilation is a way of compiling higher level programming languages into machine code so that it can run natively on a computer. Now, you're probably thinking, this is a JavaScript conference. What on earth does this have to do with JavaScript? It's not a higher level programming language. doesn't need to be compiled. doesn't need to run nat natively on a computer. Well, to be completely honest, I have no idea what it has to do with JavaScript. But I do know what it has to do with Angular. And the reason we need compilation in Angular is because we need to achieve a higher level of efficiency in our applications. And by efficiency, we mainly mean performance, but we also mean energy and bandwidth. So Angular has declarative bindings in their views and decorators on modules and directives and components. And all of those things need to run natively in a JavaScript, in a browser. So they need to be compiled down to plain old JavaScript. So it's not compilation in a true sense of the definition, but it is taking your decorated TypeScript and putting it into more understandable JavaScript. Well, understandable by the browser, not by humans. But it's not just because of TypeScript that we need compilation. We needed compilation in AngularJS as well, and that didn't use TypeScript. In AngularJS, we had directives that looked like this. And at the bottom of that directive, you can see there is a template, my awesome content. Now, that's not standard HTML. Uh, browser cannot know what to put on the page using that. So what we're actually trying to compile is that template into a JavaScript class that can render uh, the user interface and also detect changes. But one of the biggest downfalls of AngularJS, and the reason it was rather slow, was because of its dynamic approach to both rendering and change detection. The compiler was very generic, and it, uh, it worked by performing a set of dynamic computations. And because the JavaScript virtual machine struggles to optimize calculations that are so dynamic, this is why it was quite slow. It, the VM doesn't know the shapes of the objects which provide the context for the dirty checking logic. So its inline caches get a lot of misses, and that slows things down. Then Angular 2 onwards came along. And here we have an Angular 2 component. also has a very similar template, but you can see there the decorators, the component, and the input decorators. Those things need to be compiled as well. But instead of using the same dynamic style for rendering and change detection that AngularJS used, the new Angular framework generates virtual machine-friendly code, either at runtime or at build time. 
and this allows the JavaScript virtual machine to perform property access caching and execute the change detection and rendering logic much faster. This can be done either at runtime or at build time. At runtime, it's called just-in-time compilation. And what happens is the TypeScript compiler takes the TypeScript, compiles it to JavaScript, and then the Angular compiler takes that JavaScript, that Angular JavaScript, and converts it to normal JavaScript. But it does it at runtime, which means it does it every single time for every user every time the button is refreshed. So you can, uh, the refresh button is clicked, I mean. Uh, so you can see how this can slow things down. On the other hand, we have a head of time compilation. Now, the Angular compiler does everything for us. So it takes the TypeScript, compiles it to JavaScript, and then compiles it to normal JavaScript. And then it only happens once during the build process, and that gets put into the browser. So you can see how it will be a bit faster. But your build process gets slowed down. So what they actually suggest is that when you're developing, you use just-in-time compilation, and only for your production builds, you use AOT. It's built into the Angular CLI build process, which makes things a little bit easier. And supposedly, it's going to be a standard in Angular 5. Guess we'll see. Some of the benefits of a head of time compilation. As I mentioned, performance. With a head of time compilation, you don't need to compile every single time the user does something, so, so that would be a benefit. Then there's the build time errors for those people who like statically typed languages. You get your build time errors instead of runtime errors. Always a great thing. And then there's energy efficiency, which is a little bit controversial, but they say because the user's computer is not compiling the code, it would save battery and bandwidth. And and better security, because better security because you compile everything beforehand, you minify it, and only ship that to production, less access to your sensitive data. And then the last one I want to talk about is size. I put it last because I'll split it into three sections. The first one is tree shaking, and Alex took one of my slides. <laughs> but yeah, so this is part of Webpack. It comes uh, with the Angular CLI, um, and the tree shaker walks the dependency graph and shakes out any unused leaves in the tree. Uh, for Angular applications, especially small Angular applications, uh, you get a great size reduction by excluding a lot of the Angular features you're not referencing in your app. The next one is minification. When you're minifying an Angular application that was built with just-in-time compilation, you can run into problems because you have properties that are referenced both in, both in the JavaScript and in the HTML. And those properties can't be minified because only the JavaScript gets minified, not the HTML. So you get slightly larger files with just-in-time compilation. But with a head of time compilation, everything gets compiled and inlined into one file. So when the minification happens, the properties get renamed everywhere. So you get slightly smaller files. And then the last reason is the compiler. Um, you no longer need to ship the Angular compiler with your production code. So you can see how that would help with the size. Some of the things you need to consider if you're building an application with a head of time compilation. So the Angular compiler generates TypeScript files for dirty checking algorithms. And since TypeScript has access modifiers and enforces access to only public properties outside the inheritance chain, it would not be possible to access any private properties or functions that have not been exported after the compilation has happened. And also, if you're using external libraries, they would need to have been built with AOT. Um, because obviously, if you're building with AOT, you would need to have your external libraries with AOT as well. So if you're not using the Angular CLI, you need to make a few changes to your code before you can um, use a head of time compilation. 
This is an example of a main.ts file. Uh, the top one is one uh, where you would build with JIT, and the bottom one is one where you would build with AOT. There are two main differences in here. The first is platform browser dynamic versus platform browser. Now, this is because the dynamic part really means that you plan to deliver raw code. So Angular has to deliver the compiler module and compile your Angular code. So that's why you don't need it if building with AOT. And then the second one is app module versus app module ng, fa ng factory. So app module ng factory is the output of the AOT compilation process, and it's an executable form of the app module. And it includes compiled bindings, templates, styles, and those types of things that you don't normally get to see. The next changes you need to make is to your TS config. You need to add this into your TS config, which pretty much says that we're now building with ahead of time compilation, so we're skipping some metadata emits and things like that. And then the last changes you'd need to make is to your Webpack config. The Angular compiler inlines all of the HTML and CSS referenced in component decorators. So you, in this way, you can tell Webpack not to include these in order to decrease the size of your application a little bit. So if you're not using the Angular CLI, you would need to create a new main.ts, and, and you want to um, develop in JIT and do production builds with AOT, obviously. So create the main.ts, create the TS config, add scripts to your packages.json so you build differently for development and for production. Change the entry point for production so that it uses the AOT main.ts and create a new webpack config. So that's quite a lot of stuff you need to do if you're not using the CLI. Instead, you can use the CLI. And all you need to do to do that is install the Angular CLI, create a new app using this Angular CLI, and build with dash dash prod. And that uses AOT. If you don't want to build with, dash, uh, with AOT, you just say dash dash AOT equals false. The CLI uses Webpack to handle the AOT code generation and lazy loading, so you don't need to worry about any of it. Another benefit of using the Angular CLI is that you know what environment you're running in. So you can put the, if you're in production, to enable prod mode. And this is because, by default, Angular runs a second change detection cycle after each main one. And this checks to see if anything changed after it should have and notifies you if a, if a bug is detected. But by enabling prod mode, you disable the second run, so it speeds things up a little bit. So uh, let me show you a little demo. Um, I've built a pretty simple Angular app that helps you find the droids you're looking for. <laughs> and you answer a few questions, and you find the droids you're looking for. Not all the answers are BB-8, I promise, although they should be. There we go. So it's a very simple application. It's got one service and two components over here. And one bad thing about using the Angular CLI is that people usually assume that they can just do this. Type ng build, and build, it builds your code, and you can ship that to production. Now. This is a bad idea because ng-build is not production mode, it's development mode. So it doesn't minify anything, it doesn't break cache, and if I just show you that, 
you can see I have megabytes and megabytes of files and mapping files and things like that. So what you're actually supposed to do is ng build prod. I first want to show you the one without AOT. Now, you'll see here now uh, the, the cache will be broken on all of the JS files. They're all minified. It takes a little bit longer, but still not as long as the AOT build will take. And the files are slightly larger, but I'll show you the proper comparison for that in a couple of minutes. <coughs> cool. So you can see not as many megabytes, actually, we're down to kilobytes of files, not as many files, all of the mapping files are gone. And now if we build just in normal production mode, this build will take even longer, and if I did things correctly, it should also give me a build time error, which none of the other two builds picked up. There we go, build time error. And you can see it's telling me that the current, uh, current question is private and only accessible within the questions component. So over here, you can see I have a private. So if I delete that and rebuild. It should build successfully. Should. And again, um, the file sizes are not that different between JIT and AOT, but uh, I'll show you that now and explain it better. <laughs> there we go. S same number of files as JIT, but and then if we So I built in production mode with AOT and JIT, that same application I just showed you. And here are my results uh, of the file sizes, first of all. The first one I want to look at is the main JS. AOT, 20 kilobytes, JIT, 8 kilobytes. When I saw this, I, I nearly cried because I thought my whole talk is a farce. No one's going to believe me. But then I read a little bit more about AOT, and I watched the uh, compiler talks, Angular compiler talks by Tobias Bosch, and they explain it quite well. And it's because the VM-friendly code that uh, the, uh, the NGC compiler produces is more verbose compared to the normal HTML-like templates, and it also includes some dirty checking logic. So apparently they're working on reducing the size, but one of the other reasons is because my app is not very complex, uh, the size does tend to change a lot more if you have a more complicated app. But the other file I want to talk about is the vendor file. With AOT, it's 400 kilobytes, while with JIT, it's 770 kilobytes. Now, that's quite a lot more of a significant difference. And then the last thing, is the performance, the time it took the web page to load. Most of those times there are very similar, two or three milliseconds apart, which doesn't really make a difference in our lives. But if you have a look at the vendor file, with AOT, it took 36 milliseconds to load, and with JIT, it took 291 milliseconds to load. That's almost 10 times faster. So as I said, performance is the biggest benefit of AOT. And I'm done, so. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> <laughs>